Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Midas Expert webinar. My name is Ruggero Cervellini, and I'm the technical director of the Synth Engineering. In this webinar, we will discuss the retrofit analysis of a concrete viaduct. Most of the Italian infrastructures were built in the last century or before, according to load assumptions no more consistent with the actual traffic and seismic demand. But despite our age, they still support a big part of the traffic of our towns. And many of these bridges are often so strictly connected with the net of urban roads that it is impossible replacing them with new ones. For this reason, it is fundamental and sometimes urgent investigating whether the structures can still fulfill their role or if they need to be renewed or restored. All structures were designed according to obsolete rules and codes, where the adjective obsolete does not necessarily mean wrong. The effect we are going to investigate the behavior of the structure 75 years old, nowadays working, implicitly means that it was well designed and built. That's confirmed also by the quality of the calculation and drafts and by the results of non-destructive tests done. So it would be more correct saying that the old codes were incomplete. Uh, since they were written taking care of vertical loads and they did not contemplate the concept of ductility or if they did it was only sometimes and implicitly and neglected the requirements about the post-elastic behavior of structures. What do we expect analyzing similar structure? <laughs> we'll probably find good decks and weak pier and foundations with insufficient bending or shear resistance. The viaduct we are going to study overpasses the central train station in Treviso and was built in 1939. It is one of the important one of the most important gates of the city uh, because with its four ramps it directs the traffic coming from Venice that is at about 20 kilometers from, from Treviso it directs the traffic to the highways to the ring road and to Treviso downtown itself these four ramps are statically and seismically independent from the viaduct and for this reason they will not be considered in this webinar. The viaduct is made of concrete and has three spans respectively 24.7, 29.3 and 24.6 meter long. Sidewalks included uh, the deck is 13.80 meters wide and is skewed respect to its longitudinal axis with an angle of about 63 degrees. Deck is a notropic grid made of two main hollow side concrete beams with a variable height from 3 up to 3.80 meters with a third central beam 75 centimeters tall. The slab is 20 centimeters thick. Uh, the deck is not pre-stressed and the transverse secondary beams are arranged at a distance of 17-25 centimeters. Their height varies from 0 0.74 to 1.14 meters. Deck is continuous with the pier and is simply supported at the abutment with very special cast iron rolling bearings. Bearings are cracked and cylinders couldn't slide anymore on the base plate. Uh, the pin was out of the guide and they have been already replaced. Each pier is founded on nine concrete piles whose length 
is not indicated in the original available draft. Uh, according to the usual techniques of construction of the age, the pies are likely to be well bored into the gravel bed located 12 meters below the ground. Anyway, this information is not confirmed by available papers, so it, for the purpose of the project, it must be considered an unknown. The diameter of the pies is uh, 0.60 meters, and they are arranged at a mutual distance in the pipe cap of 2.40 meters. Pairs have a square cock section 1.68 per 1.68 meters and they are enforced with 58 vertical bars of 36 millimeters while steel wraps are only 5 bars of 10 millimeters arranged every 25 centimeters along the pier. The preliminary investigations including the geometrical and geological surveys, the material testing to assess the property of the materials, the reinforcement investigation to define the diameter and the position of bars. These investigations were completed by the historical research of the original project and codes and of other relevant facts occurred during the life of, bridge, of the bridge, like earthquakes or bombing in World War II. The results of the preliminary analysis lead to the definition of the knowledge level. That's a parameter defining the cognition of the structure in terms of properties, loading and behavior. The Italian standards define three different levels of knowledge, each one characterized by a confidence factor, increasing the safety factor according to this rule. In the analysis, the confidence factor can be introducing amplifying the partial safety factor for material properties. We can talk of poor knowledge or knowledge level 1 when structural details are unknown and are defined on the basis of a simulated project according to the codes of the era. Uh, material properties too are not known and the analysis are performed assuming the typical values of the material used at the time of the construction and only linear elastic analysis are performed. We have an intermediate knowledge level, that is the knowledge ledge level 2, where most of the structural details come from S-build draft or from limited in situ assessments. Uh, the properties of the materials uh, come from original design specification or from in situ tests and all kinds of analysis are performed. Finally, the third uh, knowledge level is uh, the good knowledge level and is when uh, complete structural details come from as build draft or in situ surveys as well as the property of the materials. All kinds of analysis are performed. The values of the confidence factor are respectively, are respectively equal to 1.35, 1.20 and 1. The original project of the viaduct contains all the details but the, the pipe's length. Uh, the property of the materials were assessed with non-destructive tests and static and dynamic linear and non-linear analysis uh, allowed to assume an intermediate knowledge of the structure with a confidence factor equal to 1.2. The client were concerned about the capacity of the deck to support the actual traffic loads that are greater indeed than the moving load prescribed by the old standards. 
So the first aim of the numerical analysis is defining the deck and the burnings capacity regards, with regard to the static uh, demand. And uh, the second aim of the analysis is defining pairs, abutments, burning and joints capacity with respect to the seismic demand. The layout of the numerical analysis is load analysis with respect to the actual code, definition of the finite element model, and then the numerical analysis. When the capacity is lower than the demand, the structure needs to be retrofit. And we can uh, choose between two alternative strategies. Reinforcing the weak elements providing the required strength to resist to the design external forces or improving the structural ductility so that the structure can adapt to seismic displacement and acceleration without relevant damages. The limit of the first approach is that uh, we do not exactly know how large will the real seismic forces be and the structure could be strongly damaged when the elastic limits of the material are exceeded. On the other hand, there are several well-known strengthening techniques uh, that are easier to apply and often less expensive than the others. In fact, in this case, the ductile approach requires first to separate the deck from the piers linking them with anti-seismic devices with uh, the required ductility. The ductility of the devices can be calibrated in order to limit the share of peers and abutments at a desired value. The ductility of the uh, seismic isolators can be 10 times or more larger than the structural one. In this case, we propose to use the lead rubber bearings. On the other hand, the intervention is more difficult and expensive, but the final structure can stand earthquakes without relevant damages. Notwithstanding his age, the viaduct appears what were preserved with just a few critical points needing to be restored when the corrosion of the reinforcement caused the breakaway of the concrete cover. Only the sliding bearings of the abutment were seriously damaged. Uh, the carbonatation is limited within the thickness of the concrete cover and corrosion didn't affect the reinforcement. As you can see in these photos, concrete is not damaged and only superficial treatments are required. The thick coating of black grey smoke layered by the ancient steam locomotives probably protected the concrete surface from aggressive agents. Concrete assessment required five different types of tests. Sclerometric, ultrasonic and pull-out tests were completed with logging of concrete core samples for carbonatation and resistance tests. The position and the diameter of the reinforcement as well as the thickness of the concrete cover were assessed with pachometer test. The quality of the steel used for the reinforcement was assessed with the traction test on sample taken on site. The results of this uh, test permitted to establish, first of all, that the quality of the material is homogeneous in the structure. Then, that the resistant class of concrete is uh, C2530, while Steel used for the reinforcement has a yield stress of 315 megapascal and an ultimate stress of 490 megapascal. 
The geological survey permitted to define the design stratigraphy of soil represented by an alternation of silty sand and silty clay thin layers due to the gravel bed located at about 20 meters below the ground level. The buoyancy is located at 6 meters below ground. The structural capacity with regard to the actual moving loads were defined with linear static analysis. While three different analyses were performed in order to assess the dynamic response of the structure. The nonlinear static or pushover to define, to investigate the elastic and post-elastic behavior. The linear response spectrum to evaluate the design forces to perform the session checks and define the retrofit strategies. And finally, the nonlinear time history for the isolated structure. The nonlinear properties of the materials can be modeled with plastic hinges lumped at the ends of the element or with fiber models where the section of the element is discretized into fibers which uh, deform axially only. The plastic hinges formulation is computationally more efficient and allows to define the shear capacity of PS2. But a great number of formulations exist for plastic hinges. Uh, for the peers of this viaduct, uh, the FEMA 356 plastic hinge was used. Uh, in order to check whether the setting of the plastic hinge were reliable with the peers of this viaduct, it was decided to compare the results of a sample of a simple benchmark test. Two models of a single square pier 1.68 per 1.68 meters were analyzed, one with plastic hinges and one with fibers. fibers. The pier is 5.25 meters tall and is clamped at the base. The vertical loads are the dead and the permanent load of the deck. According to the Italian standard, the stiffness of the pier is reduced to 50% due to the cracking of concrete. The elastic properties of the materials are defined according to a bilinear model for steel and to the Nagoya model for concrete. The properties of the plastic hinge for the axial and bending components are auto-calculated by the program on the basis of the reinforcement defined for the concrete design of pier. The FEMA plastic hinge is defined with respect to the moment rotation curve. The results of the benchmark test are represented in these diagrams where we can see that the uh, plastic hinge offers a good approximation of the bending and elastic behavior of the material, even if the fiber, the fiber model gives a more detailed description of yield and rupture points. The pushover analysis will demonstrate that the structure will always have an elastic behavior with the maximum displacement at a performance point of about 15 millimeters. And we can see in these diagrams that the maximum error is less than 10% and for this reason the assumption can be considered suitable with the purposes of the analysis. Now, uh, let me show to you the finite element model. The deck is modeled as a spatial grid composed of three longitudinal beams and cross beams. 
The cross section of the main beams of the deck are defined with the sectional property calculation tool and then imported into MIDAS Civil. Uh, the sections of uh, the deck are defined with the center top offset and uh, rigid elastic links connect the different parts of the structures and take in account the actual eccentricities between the center lines of the elements. The pie cap is modeled with plate elements. It's a square plate 6.20 per 6.20 meters, 1.36 meter thick, and uh, pies are arranged at mutual distance equal to uh, 2.40 meters. The verification of the foundation is not required, so a coarse mesh is uh, uh, adequate to pick the dynamic response of the structure with a sufficient precision. Pier section is simply made of square beam column elements, 1.68 per 1.68 meters. Even if uh, the pile length is unknown, the foundation must be correctly defined since the soil structure interaction has an important role in the response of the structure. Three alternatives were here considered. The first with piers clamped at mid-plane of the pile caps. The second with piles clamped at a critical depth ranging from 1.5 up to 3 times the diameter of the pile. And finally, with the pile supposed to be bored in the gravel bed with a length of 15 meter. In this case, the soil structural interaction is modeled according to the linear elastic theory of Winkler modified by Chiaruji and Maya. Uh, the burning capacity of the foundation is not under discussion here. The structure is not affected by settlements and permanent loss didn't significantly change during its life. The actual moving loads are greater than the old one, it's true, but their effects in terms of settlement are secondary with respect to the permanent components. For this reason, we can say that the assumption we are doing is relevant only to assess the seismic behavior of the structure, and three different models of the structure will be compared in terms of dynamic behavior with pushover analysis. The nonlinear properties of the material is introduced with the firma plastic hinge. As always, results are represented in the diagrams for longitudinal and transversal earthquake, where we can see that the clamped pier assumption is too conservative in terms of forces and underestimates the deformation of the structure. The fundamental period is equal to 0 0.262 seconds. The model with long piles probably uh, gives the best soil structure interaction, but the unknown variable of pile length may lead to unsafe results. Uh, because the deformability of soil is, is relevant respect to the structure and one and may lead to overestimate the fundamental period that is equal to 0 0.432 seconds. And more, further expensive geological surveys and uh, more detailed soil analysis should be required to proceed under this assumption. The clamped pile models gives intermediate results and takes into consideration the effect of soil plastic deformation at the top of the piles. 
it does not overestimate the fundamental period that is equal to 0 0.313 seconds. And this model is not affected by the limits of a poor knowledge of the soil properties because their critical depth ranges from 1.5 to 3 times the pi diameter. Uh, in other words, a wrong assumption will not particularly affect the results. And the clamped pi models will be used for the structural analysis of the viaduct uh, assuming a critical depth of 1.80 meters. The first question of the client was, can the viaduct still carry the actual traffic conditions? But, uh, considering that the structure is not affected by relevant settlements and that the permanent laws did not change until today, uh, the answer can be found investigating in detail the effects of the moving loads on the deck with the linear static analysis. This picture shows the Moving load the centricity is referred to the center line of the deck with the carriage width of 8.90 meters. The centricity is equal to 2.95 meters for on right for lane load 1 or 5 centimeters for on left for lane load 2 while the remaining area has an eccentricity of 3 meters on the left. Moving loads, uh, per Italian standards, are the same prescribed by the Euro codes and the load combination factors are equal to 1.35 for structural permanent load, 1.50 for non-structural permanent load, 1.35 for moving loads and 1.50 for the other live loads. The static analysis led to the maximum uh, forces for the ultimate limit state. Uh, we can read a maximum positive bending of about 12,000 kilonewton per meter at about that mid span of side spans and a maximum negative bending of about 18,000 kilonewton per meter in the section at the top of the piers. The ultimate limit uh, check was performed with the Medal General Section Designer Tool. Now we can see the verification for the positive moment. The section has a top layer of 25 bars of 36 millimeters and a bottom layer of 18 uh, bars of 36 millimeters. The ratio between the uh, design force and the resistance force is equal to 0 0.83 and the confidence factor uh, was introduced amplifying the partial safety factor of the material properties and the coefficient for long-term effects is maintained to is assumed as 0 0.85 instead of 1. This is a conservative assumption. The section is the verification is checked for positive moment with a coefficient almost equal to 1. And the same for the section at the top of the pier where the top layer of reinforcement uh, consists of 25 bars of feet 36 and uh, the bottom layer consists of 7 plus 18 bars of 36 millimeters. The ratio is 0 0.7 and the section is checked with the coefficient of 0 0.87. Also the central beam is verificated. The, for the section 
with positive moment. The reinforcement consists of 220 at the top layer and 330 bars at the bottom layer. The ratio is 0 0.75 and the final coefficient of the verification is 0 0.90. The section with negative moment uh, is reinforced at the top with two bars of 30 millimeters and at the bottom with two bars of 30 millimeters. The coefficient is 0 0.61 and the final coefficient of the verification is 0 0.73. The slab verification was performed considering, considering a clamped rectangular area between two beams and two cross beams. Local direction for sums gives uh, in the center section a bending moment of 12 kN per meter and along the clamped edge a maximum value of 40 kN per meter. The reinforcement consists of a top layer of one bar of 16 mm every 10 cm and of a bottom layer with one bar of 10 mm every 10 cm. The ratio are respectively, respectively equal to 0 0.73 and 0, 0 0.4 with a finite coefficient of 0 0.88. Uh, the slab satisfies also the punch and shear verification with a load of 200 kN spread on a rectangular area of 600 per 350 millimeters. So on the basis of these results we can say that uh, the viaduct can still fulfill the actual traffic loads. And now I will explain to you the substitution of the bearings that starting with the lifting of the deck with the hydraulic jacks and the demolition of the concrete base or supporting the old bearings that were removed from their place and substituted with new steel bearings and the reinforcement exposed during the works were protected against the corrosion with epoxy painting. New bearings are free sliding spherical hinges in which the rotation about any horizontal axis is ensured by the sliding of a convex steel element in a monolithic element covered with SMF, that is special sliding material, a patented special sliding material. The vertical capacity of the bearing is 3500 kN and permitted movements are plus or minus 50 mm for longitudinal displacement and plus or minus 60 mm for transversal displacement. In this section we can see where the SMF layer are arranged and this table compares the admissible contact pressures of the SMF sliding material in comparison with those of the common PTFE and we can see that uh, they are always the double. This diagram compares the friction coefficient of SMF with PTFE. The different thickness of the devices was compensated with the steel element fixed on a new concrete base. The next step is investigating whether the structure can support the seismic demand. Um, please consider that in 1939 Treviso and its neighborhoods were not considered seismic areas. 
They were classified with a low seismicity only in 1972. The actual code defined the seismic reach of each structure not only as an inner property of the site, but also of the structure itself, depending on its static scheme, loss, ductility and restraining conditions. As I said before, three different kinds of analysis will be performed. The static nonlinear, the linear response spectrum and the nonlinear time history. The pushover analysis defines the post-elastic behavior of the structure, that is, if, where and how the elastic limit is exceeded. And the FEMA 356 plus this inch correctly approximate the elastic behavior of the pillar. Two different post-elastic behavior will be investigated, the axial plus bending uh, behavior and the shear behavior. Before approaching the nonlinear static analysis, it's better looking at the modal response of the structure that always gives important information. The first two modes regard respectively the longitudinal and the transversal translations. In the first mode, more than 70% of the masses participate to the longitudinal translation with a period equal to to 0 0.313 seconds. In the second mode, more than 50% of the masses participate to the transversal translations with a period equal to 0 0.293 seconds. And the pushover load can be assumed as proportional to the modal load shape. Uh, to the first mode, for the longitudinal earthquake and the second mode for the transversal earthquake. The master node is uh, at the center of the deck and the maximum displacement is equal to 10 cm. This is the compiled formulation of the uh, plastic hinge and these are the results. The uh, capacity curve of the peers demonstrate that the performance points is always within the elastic field. That means that uh, the structure can be studied with the linear response spectrum analysis, assuming a structural coefficient q equal to 1, and the design spectrum shall be the elastic response spectrum. The shear behavior is different because the displacement demand is greater than the displacement capacity and the structure need to be retrofit. The design spectra are defined by the Italian code introducing the geographical coordinates of the structure and some other parameters that define its importance. The class of the structure is the fourth because it is a strategic bridge. The nominal life of the structure is longer than 100 years and the reference life is obtained multiplying the nominal life for the use coefficient and is equal to 200 years. The reference life defines the reference return period of the seismic action and the elastic response spectrum. We have already seen the first and the second mode of the structure and we can say that both periods are within the plateau range for longitudinal and transversal earthquake. The design forces of pier and foundation are maximum. The ductility verification demonstrate that uh, plastic hinges have uh, sufficient rotation capacity and the table resumes the verification of the longitudinal and transversal deformation demand for every load 
or every seismic load combination. The strand verification of peers uh, were performed using the design and check tools of Mida Civil, introducing the confidence factor as uh, a partial factor of the material. As explained before, the coefficient for long term effect is conservatively assumed equal to 0 0.85 instead of 1. Looking at the results, we find a similar situation for every peer, and we find that uh, peer almost satisfy the verification for the static moving loads and they would also for the seismic combination if the confidence factor was equal to 1 or if alpha was equal to 1 with a confidence factor equal to 1.2 and alpha equal to 1.85 they do not bring the maximum coefficient equal to 1.12 uh, as we expected the bending behavior is not the problem, but sure, peer strength is always insufficient with the minimum coefficient equal to 2.15 and even uh, with the confidence factor and alpha equal to 1, it would be the 1.55 uh, that is too much larger than 1. Uh, on the other hand, the results match with what expected since the seismic rates were not considered in 1939. Uh, the viaduct was designed essentially for vertical load and from this point of view uh, we can also say that the original assumptions are still valid but peers now need to be retrofit. It is possible to choose between two two alternative approaches. Improving the short distance of pier with concrete jacketing of piers or wrapping around with fiber reinforcing polymers or reducing the lateral forces. The, with the pier jacketing, each pier is clad with a concrete jacket uh, 26 cm thick. The dimensions of the second change from 1.68 to 2.2 meters. The vertical reinforcement consists of 32 bars of 12 millimeters along the perimeters, while stirrups are uh, two uh, bars of uh, 16 millimeters ranged uh, at 10 centimeters along the pier. These stirrups are uh, uh, completed with uh, 3 plus 3 bars of 12 millimeters through the pier arranged every 30 centimeters. Jacketed piers are stiffer and the moment of inertia uh, is almost tripled and the fundamental period reduces it to 0 0.289 seconds. For these reasons, lateral forces are greater. But on the other hand, the concrete jacket increases the global resistance of the sections. It confines the original concrete core and limits the buckling of uh, the longitudinal reinforcement. This image compares the fundamental periods of longitudinal and transversal modes for retrofitted and non-retrofitted structure. Uh, in this table we can read the design force and the resistance share for the non-retrofitted structure. We can see how the design force is always larger in the longitudinal direction. And in this table we find the same values for the retrofitted pier. And we can see now that the resistance share is always larger and satisfies the requirements. These diagrams show the 
longitudinal and transversal design shear force for the retrofit and non-retrofit piers. And these other graphs show the design shear and the resistance shear for longitudinal and transversal earthquake of the retrofit structure. The carbon fiber reinforced polymer are an excellent retrofitting alternative. CFRP confines the concrete core and at the same time improves the shear resistance without increasing the transversal uh, without increasing the dimension of the cross section of the pier. The CFRP have a linear behavior till to rupture and the graph compares the constitutive diagrams of steel, uh, glass and carbon fiber reinforced polymers. The rules enforced in Italy for the use of CFRP are the CNR DT200 of 2004. Istruzioni per la progettazione e l'esecuzione del controllo di interventi di consolidamento statico mediante l'utilizzo di compositi fibro rinforzati. The shear resistance is assumed equal to the minimum value of the resistance of concrete of the resistance of steel and the resistance of fiber reinforcement polymer. And the confinement was made wrapping three layers of uniaxial fibers with their properties written in this table. And the length of the part to be wrapped is defined according to the theoretical plastic hinge length that is at about uh, 200 dot 85 meters at the base of the pier. But considering also the plastic hinge at the top of the pier, the full length uh, need to be wrapped. The CFRP retrofit piers fulfill their resistance requirements due to the actual seismic forces. And the most important advantage is that the intervention can be done without interdicting the traffic on the tracks close to the piers. Works are cheaper and will take a shorter time. The diagrams compare the design and the resistant uh, force of retrofit and non-retrofitted piers for longitudinal and transversal earthquake. The second alternative is represented by the seismic isolation and it is an approach completely different from the force since it drops the force base design for the displacement base design. The inland ductility of the structure can be increased introducing a concentrated ductility by the means of special devices that decouple the soil motion from the structure motion. The first idea of decoupling the motions dates back to 1870 by Jules Toyon, but it was patented only in 2001 by Akuda at the double concave frisson pendulum. In this picture we can see the original idea of Toyon and uh, the patented uh, frisson pendulum of Ayakuda. The first seismically isolated viaduct of the world was built uh, at about 40 years ago uh, in Italy and it was uh, the Sumplago viaduct and it was designed by engineer Renzo Medeot. It was the only bridge that was not damaged by the Friuli earthquake in 1976. This fact gave a strong impulse to the construction of seismically isolated infrastructures. And in 10 years, more than uh, 150,000 square meters of isolated decks were built. The Italian rules for the design of seismically isolated bridges were enforced in 1993 as istruzioni per la progettazione antisismica dei ponti con l'impiego di dispositivi isolatori dissipatori. 
today the reference international standard is the EN uh, 15129 that officially came into force in 2011 after a long process that lasted 18 years. The design aim is limiting the shear force at the pier using devices with adequate ductility. The isolated structure has a larger period, that is, a lower response. The seismic energy is transformed into deformation energy during the stellatic cycle of uh, the deformation of the devices. The project considers to isolate the viaduct with lead rubber bearing. The lead rubber bearings are uh, elastomeric uh, bearings with uh, one or more lead core. The lead rubber bearings simply substitute the bearings at the abutment, but in order to locate them between the deck and the pier, it is necessary to cut the structural continuity. The, this is the constitutive law of uh, a lead rubber bearing, and the design of uh, such a device follows an iterative procedure. The first step is uh, uh, fixing the tryout values of uh, the initial elastic stiffness of the post-elastic stiffness ratio of the yield force and of the ultimate displacement. With this data, it's possible to calculate the effective damping and the scale design spectrum. The calculation of the ultimate uh, uh, so we can calculate the ultimate displacement in the model and compare it with the tryout uh, with the tryout initial value. If the values differ less than five percent, the iterative procedure can be concluded. The table resumes the calculated values of uh, at the fourth iteration for the rubber bearings of this viaduct. The initial stiffness of the rubber bearing of the pier is equal to uh, 15,400 kilonewton per meter with a yield force of 183 kN and a post yield stiffness ratio equal to 0 0.13. The equivalent stiffness, that is the second stiffness, is equal to 4,000. 126 kilonewton per meter and the effective damping is uh, the 27 percent. For the layer rubber bearing of the abutment, the initial elastic stiffness is uh, equal to uh, 25,000 kilonewton per meter. The yield force is 281 kilonewton. The post yield stiffness ratio is the 0.053. The linear equivalent stiffness is 4780 kilonewton per meter and the effective damping is the 39%. It means that we will see that uh, it means uh, that uh, linear, uh, linear response spectrum analysis are not allowed. Now the tables. In these tables we can read uh, the maximum displacement evaluated at the fourth iteration. We can see that the maximum value is 81 millimeters, that is only 4.80% larger than the target displacement. The lead rubber bearing device can be introduced in the numerical model as a general link with uh, uh, the uh, linear equivalent uh, stiffness value for the linear behavior and with the parameters uh, for the non-linear behavior, the initial stiffness, the yield strength and the post-yield stiffness ratio. 
the same for the uh, lead rubber bearing of the abutments and uh, the isolated viaduct can be studied with the linear response spectrum when occur the conditions set at the paragraph 7, 10, 5, 2 of the NTC 2008 the Italian standards. The effective damping of the abutment is uh, C equal to the 39% that is larger than the 30%. For this reason, the linear analysis is not allowed. Uh, nevertheless, it gives important preliminary information about the behavior of the isolated system and it can sometimes be used to check the reliability of the nonlinear analysis. The design response spectrum is the elastic spectrum scaled with the factor Q only along the components of motion. The fundamental period of the isolated structure is uh, 1.503 seconds instead of uh, 0.313 seconds and the response spectrum is scales in the 80% of the fundamental period that is 1.2 seconds the red line is the design elastic reduced elastic spectrum the, in the tables, in these tables, we can read the base shear values calculated for the non-isolated and for the isolated structure. Uh, since uh, the linear response spectrum analysis is not allowed, uh, it, no linear time history should be performed. And the seismic action is described with seven groups of generated accelerograms. Uh, three pairs of horizontal plus three pairs of vertical ground motion time mystery components were used and the accelerograms are consistent with the five percent of the dampened design seismic spectrum and they were generated with the program Syncwake. This picture show the time history of the horizontal horizontal earthquake and the compatibility with the design spectrum and for the vertical earthquake. The nonlinear time history and the results in terms of longitudinal and transversal displacements of the lead rubber bearing of the piers. They demonstrate a regular behavior and an efficient. Um, resetting at the end uh, at the end of the earthquake also for the transversal earthquake the same for the lead rubber bearings of the abutments and the maximum values of the displacement are grouped in this table and the diagrams show the results obtained and give the base share for longitudinal earthquake for the non-isolated structure for the isolated structure uh, evaluated with linear analysis and for non-linear analysis we can see that the linear analysis even if not allowed is a little bit co more conservative the same for the transversal base shear. The purple column is the resistance shear and is always m much larger than the design force. Just a note, introducing the isolator requires to separate the piers from the deck and after the cut the deck we we'll change the static scheme and we became a continuous beam on bearings. It means that uh, we will have uh, greater positive moments and lower negative moments. So uh, the uh, beams of the deck need to be checked again and maybe retrofitted. 
The client decided to retrofit the bioduct crop in the PS with a carbon fiber reinforcing poly polymers. This was the reason of its decision. It is the less expensive intervention, it takes a short time and can be done without interdicting the traffic on the track adjacent to the pier. Regarding the seismic isolation of the structure, the client considered that the cost would have exceeded the available budget and it would have had negative effects on traffic over the deck during the construction. We expected this decision, but uh, on the other hand, it was important, in our opinion, calling the attention on more efficient and reliable design approach. That's all. I thank you for your attention, and I will please to answer to any question addressed by mail. Thank you, and goodbye.